Welcome to our lecture series on lipids. Here we will learn about the total amount of ATP generating energy held within fatty acids. During one round of beta oxidation, energy potential is gained with the formation of one molecule of FADH2, one molecule of NADH, and one acetyl-CoA. The FADH2 and NADH can be used directly in the electron transport chain to generate ATP. Acetyl-CoA is oxidized to carbon dioxide in the Krebs cycle, generating one GTP, three NADH, and one FADH2. The electron carriers will then also feed into the electron transport chain. To calculate how much energy can be generated by a full-length fatty acid, it's useful to calculate how many molecules of acetyl-CoA can be generated and how many rounds of beta oxidation are required to generate them. For all even fatty acids, the following equation can be used to calculate the number of acetyl-CoA molecules formed, the number of carbon atoms in the fatty acid divided by two. So for the 16 carbon fatty acid, eight acetyl-CoA molecules can be formed. The total rounds of beta oxidation needed to liberate all the acetyl-CoA molecules is found by dividing the total number of carbons by two and then subtracting one. Thus for a 16 carbon fatty acid, dividing by two gives you eight and then subtract one to yield a total of seven rounds of beta oxidation required. The other bit of information needed is the conversion rates for the electron carriers, FADH2 and NADH. When they drop off their electrons in the electron transport chain, one molecule of FADH2 can generate enough proton potential to make one and a half ATP while 1-NADH can generate 2.5 ATP. Note that these rates take into account the cost of transporting ATP out of the matrix of the mitochondria once it is made. The overall energy load to consider during fatty acid oxidation includes the energy input to convert the fatty acid to fatty acyl-CoA. This process breaks down ATP into AMP, losing two phosphate groups. This is equivalent to a cost of two ATP molecules. If we use our conversion factors for FADH2 and NADH listed on the previous slide, we can evaluate how many ATP should be produced with one round of beta oxidation and one round of acetyl-CoA oxidation in the Krebs cycle. For beta oxidation, one round will generate four ATP molecules. For one acetyl-CoA being oxidized in the Krebs cycle, 10 ATP will be produced. Now if we go back and evaluate the entire fatty acid, we can calculate how much ATP will be generated. For a 16 carbon fatty acid, the eight acetyl-CoA molecules will generate 80 ATP, and the seven rounds of beta oxidation required to generate them will yield an additional 28 ATP. Subtracting off the two ATP equivalents required for the formation of the fatty acyl-CoA at the beginning brings the total ATP potential to 106 ATP, quite a bit more than a single molecule of glucose rated at about 32 ATP.